Hey chess lovers, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dhere Bagga and today I'll be showing you one of the interesting chess games that I played recently. Now my open started off with e4 and I went with c6. Open goes for c4 here, interesting choice. Uh, trying to negotiate uh, the center completely. I went with d5, open does take, I take back and now opponent takes back again. And if you see uh, the king is exposed from the center and that's why slight advantage to black already. Here I developed bishop uh, to d7, uh, open gets the knight out onto c3. I play in a knight f6, trying to attack the pawn, open tries to play pawn forward here, uh, trying to make sure that the bishop can be active next. Well, I played a6, preventing any bishop trades, which could have occurred, uh, and then knight would have come on to b5. Uh, here knight comes on to f3, and I play queen to a5. Now, in this position, if you see, white has got a better development already. Uh, the knights are solid. Uh, bishop is ready to come out. Queen is kind of happy. Uh, and open will be able to cancel quickly. Uh, but if you see on the black side, uh, playing pawn forward is a tough task because open can take. And once you do take back, uh, there is always a threat of a d4 as well. And since bishop would be there on c4, it would be tough to break open the center and of course open will be casting and getting the king uh, the rook in the center hitting the uh, king so a huge advantage to white already with the setup which had what best could have been done i could have uh, not developed the bishop over d7 here and maybe went for knight uh directly and then see it from there on maybe play uh e6 early so that i can get the dark square bishop out as well uh, but that was gone already. So I thought of how to make a comeback in the game. After bishop to c4, I went with a b5, again trying to chase the bishop away. Bishop goes back and I play pawn forward b4, hitting the knight. And now knight goes back on to e2. And here I take on the pawn finally because it's defended only once with the bishop. And I'm happy to trade off with the queen. Uh, the knight and bishop would be get exchanged, but here my open castles and allows me to play e6 finally. Uh, e6 was very important because you want to develop the bishop and then castle. Uh, open plays a bishop now on to e3, and I go for bishop d6. Now pawn forward by the opponent, which is very passive as per the games, uh, the stage of the game. Open could have continued with the attack and the development, but once the open knight goes back and suddenly you see casting coming you see h3 being played allowed me space to castle uh, and that's what i do and if you see now the engine evaluation it's close to 0.3 which is almost equal uh with white having slight advantage after queen to uh, d3 i always had bishop uh, to b5 hitting the queen and the knight and the rook behind so open can get the bishop in between and trade but open denies and this is the queen backwards on to c2. Here I went with a knight to d6, uh, trying to just develop the other knight as well, get the rook onto the c file and take control of the open file. Open goes with knight to a g5 there. Uh, I don't know the purpose behind this. It's not hitting any of the weaknesses in the black structure. So I would say not a really good move. You need to understand that what is a good move in the middle game uh, because if, if it's not solving any purpose, why would you do that? I went with uh, h6, but instead I'm just wondering what if I could have taken here. Uh, I can even turn off the best moves here. If I take an opponent does take back and I take the knight, opponent can take back and then I can take on the knight as well. That, that can be uh, getting me additional advantage. Uh, that was one possibility, but I thought I just kick. I didn't think that in the game, so I thought I'll just push the knight away, played pawn forward, open retrieves with a knight to e4 there. And here I took on the uh, bishop finally, open dash take back, and I went with bishop backwards. Uh, getting a bishop backwards uh, when it's being hit by knight is always a good move uh, because it increases the scope of the bishop and restricts the knight movement as well to the front squares. Now the knight cannot come to any of these squares. Uh, I have taken control by not exchanging the bishop but getting it backwards itself.
here open place uh, rook to uh, f3 and i go for an attack by placing f5 hitting the knight uh, opponent takes a free pawn there which of course he can and i have to move the king uh, and opponent can take another free pawn so those are two pawns for nothing losing i went with a uh, knight f6 now trying to hit the knight and exchange it off the board open doesn't take allows a uh, bishop again backwards uh bishop here uh, tried to defend uh, the fork which was coming uh, on to g6 uh, which did come but i can take off now uh, open takes back with the bishop uh, i place a rook on to d8 uh, rook in front of the queen normal basics nothing much there open doubles up the rook on to the f file i trade off the uh, knights here open takes back with the bishop i trade off the rooks and if you see here, it's it's a balanced situation, except uh, Open has got huge advantage because of the center pawns. Now, I thought, let me grab some pawns on the queen side because I need to create pressure of uh, my own side because if I allow, push these pawns forward, Open will feel the heat of it. Uh, and so always try to find out where the counterattack lies in your structure. And this was one of them. And uh, here, uh, my opening plays rook to f7, hitting the bishop, uh, preparing maybe queen coming and exchanging off once I move the bishop away, can exchange the rooks. Uh, and then the queen, the bishop is nice already. But my opponent thought, actually, opponent forgot that the queen moves backward as well. It's a reverse diagonal, and queen takes rook, is completely winning. So uh, reverse diagonal, I have mentioned a lot of times, uh, people who can spot the reverse diagonals are generally a good, or I would say a better chess player. Uh, yes, you can miss them occasionally, but still it is something you should always look out forward to. Uh, this, this happens a lot of time. It used to happen with me a lot of times earlier, have reduced it to a certain extent, still working on it, of course, but hey, my opponent lost it uh, because missed the reverse diagonal simply. Queen takes on rook and then open had to play with the bishop. So uh, got the bishop backwards so that there's no filtration coming from here. I cannot uh, go to the uh, king side there. And I start developing, uh, pushing my pawn as well. Uh, now both the pawns are connected. Open starts pushing the center pawns. I go with bishop uh, g5 uh, hitting the queen. Queen gets up and now I double up trying to hit the pawn. Open places pawn forward and now queen to e7. Uh, trying to make squares for the queen, maybe trying to hit a lot of directions with the queen. Uh, I went now had to save the pawn here because queen was attacking the pawn. So queen a7 defends and gives a check, cuts off a diagonal. Always happy to do do so. King comes to h2 and now another check from the bishop. Now it's a problem if you push the pawn because here comes the queen and and then you have a lot of troubles to be dealing with. Only square would be this, and after a bishop takes, you're yeah, looking at a checkmate. Uh, so let's go back in the game, where after king goes uh, to h1, I thought of placing my rook again on the open file, and that would be a nasty check, would be tough to control. Open goes bishop backwards, doesn't help, because here comes the check. Yes, open can plant the bishop in between, but here comes the next move, which over was the game because queen f2 is very strong here uh, i'm threatening to take the bishop bishop is already pinned so you cannot move the bishop i'll take it with the rook and open will have no other choice but to take with the queen because uh, the h2 is already controlled uh, with the bishop and then uh, after queen takes queen it's a forced mate so here my open designs uh and yeah it was a complete uh challenging game in between I had to deal with the center pawns, which often had the advantage. Uh, one blunder is all it takes, but you need to capitalize on such moves because, uh, yes, my opponent didn't see the reverse diagonal of the queen, but I saw it. That was the difference maker. If I even didn't see and I was focused on giving a check from here, maybe grabbing a pawn, I would have lost the game for sure. Like pretty much high chances because these two center pawns were vicious. I hope there was a learning in this game and it helps you improve your chess to the next level. Uh, and yeah, feel free to speak, feel free to connect uh, on Instagram, on YouTube, comment uh, on the video, do let me know your feedback. Keep watching and sharing and please do subscribe to the channel as well uh, if you're liking these videos and I shall see you tomorrow on, again 
with some instructive and interesting content as always. Thanks for your time. Take care. Bye-bye.